On the Wado Radio Show. Yeah, man, it's DJ Wado. It's the Wado Radio Show. It's more than music. It's ministry, man. And uh, I have a very special guest on the show. It's not too often, uh, you know, that we've had actors and people of that sort. But this brother is much more than an actor. Uh, he's a minister, motivational speaker, author, athlete, former pro athlete, um, and just an amazing guy, man. You might have seen him in the movie The War Room. He was one of the stars of that film, man. I have T.C. Stallings on the line with me, man. What's up, brother? Hey, man, I appreciate you, man, and humbled by the introduction, and uh, thanks for having me on your show. Man, absolutely, bro, absolutely, man. As as I mentioned, man, you you have uh, so many gifts and, and talents, and, you know, I, I think you're one of those people, man, that people may um, be exposed to you in one realm, and then once they get to know you, they see all this other stuff that you have going on, man, and it's just amazing right. um, that you're doing all that, man. Yeah, you know, it's, um, for me, just trying to figure out what the Lord wanted me, uh, which, if I'm honest, was not something that I was interested in wow. in the first part of my life. Um, I just wanted to go to the NFL. You know, that 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 was how I grew up. That's what I pursued, and it's funny. That's that's a big dream, you know, and, and, and but you don't know that it's not the only uh, goal that the Lord has for you. You know, we, my little mind saw that as big enough. My, my life didn't have any more room for anything else. Uh, but several years later, you know, the Lord starts, to throw acting in here and speaking in here and, and ministry in here and all the different things that I ever thought that I'd be doing. But, you know, that's, uh, that's what Scripture says, man. You do more than you can imagine or think, and that's kind of where I sit right now. Man, that's so dope, bro. Um, You know, so so growing up, were, were you, like, in a Christian household, or, you know, did your, did your faith kind of come into play later on? Well, I I, I love to, 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 to paint the clear picture that, you know, I didn't grow up in a Christian household, but I had a Christian mom. Mm. And, and I know people are like, how is that even possible? Like, well, you know, for to be a Christian household, I feel like that word means everybody's Christian. Yep. And uh, everybody's following the Lord, and that wasn't the case for me, you know, with my family. But, you know, my, my mother was, and eventually, uh, I didn't grow up with my dad, but my stepfather, you know, my mother's husband, he eventually, he wasn't at first, but then he eventually came around. But, uh, you know, my brothers and sisters kind of did their own thing. But... Um, at the end of the day, my mother was just uh, a, a growing Christian that continued to grow, and she was, you know, far into it enough to where she went to church all the time, she sang in the choir all the time, and took me there. So I got introduced by Christ by force of her habit, and, uh, man, that was just a seed that ended up, you know, taking off and, and birthing me into a, a, a full, uh, complete Christ follower later on down the line. That's something that I learned later on down the line. But my belief started at, at my home with my mom. Man, that's incredible. You um, you know, you 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 became a pro athlete, you know, Arena League, Canadian mm-hmm. Football League, you know, all those different things, man. And um, you know, you always say your dream was to make it to the NFL. Was it yep. was it disappointing for you that that you never quite got to that point even though you were a professional football player? It was extremely disappointing to me for a lot of reasons, um, all the way up until I realized why I did get there. Mm. And um, I'm, I'm not one of those guys that like to sit up there and have these false stories about you were so great, but just couldn't get that shot. You know, yeah. I re- you know, people can look at the tape and will be like, why didn't this dude make it? And that's what <laughs> makes my story a lot more amazing because yeah. I had the talent. It was never about not being good enough. It just seemed like every league that I played in, you break all these records and do all these different things, and then you think, okay, I'm headed over to the NFL. And on each level, like, you know, my first three years in the Arena League, you know, I want to go to the NFL. They they gave me a couple looks but never pulled the trigger, but then the CFL pulled the trigger. So I'm like, all right, I'm on the doorstep of the NFL. So I go over there, and then you shine in the playoffs and do all these things. I'm like, and here it is. But then it wasn't them. They, they still stuttered their feet. And then Europe took me. So I go to Europe, and we won a Super Bowl over there, and you rush for almost 1,500 yards. And it's like, now I'm definitely going. And so that was the next step. And I was about 30, 31 at that time. And I knew it would be tough for a 31-year-old running back to get in, so I had to have amazing numbers. And I yeah. got those numbers. But when I came back to the state, before I got a chance to get all into that, I'd go and see this movie. And it, and it was called Fireproof. And it was a movie wow. about, about marriage. And I see this film, and I watch what it did in the theaters, and I'm watching all these people thinking about being better husbands and being better 
dads and all these different things. And I'm like, this is powerful. So my heart started beating for acting at that moment. Like, I really wanted to do it. And it's, I, just, I write about it in my first book, The Pursuit. The Lord straight up just shifted my passion. I no longer wanted to go to the NFL. Wow. I wanted to check out this new thing, which I knew nothing about. But then here I am, you know, so that, that's what ended up happening. So, yeah, I was very disappointed until the Lord showed me why everything kind of came to a screeching halt athletically. So, how, so this is what's crazy. So the same people that did Fireproof also did The War Room. Yeah, yeah. Like, and they're the same people that gave me my first ever role, which is courageous, you know. See, so I'm sitting here in the theater watching Fireproof. And like I said, I saw the impact, and I'm like, I think I know what I want to do next. I think I know what the Lord may want me to do, but I got to I gotta validate this thing through him. I got to pray about it and see. And in doing that, um, I found out that, the, that who the Kendrick brothers were and uh, that they were holding auditions and doing auditions around the country for Courageous, um, the, the movie that came out in 2011 about uh, fatherhood. Yep. And so I just started trying to track them down. I, I, I got to track them down, and... I caught up with Erin Bethay, who starred in Fireproof, and I wrote her an email. I wrote her an email. She actually read the thing. You know that never happens. Wow. When you look them up online and you send some, what well, happened for me? You know she and she replied and said that your story is compelling, and I want to share it with the Kendrick. She shared it with the Kendrick. Next thing I know, I'm auditioning on Skype in my living room for this role, <laughs> and uh, so I do two Skype interviews and uh, two Skype uh, auditions, and on that second one. They went on ahead and offered me the role a few weeks later, wow. and I was TJ in the movie Courageous, and I met the Kendrick, and we've been friends ever since. And then, uh, you know, they told me at the end of shooting uh, Courageous that, um, you know, uh, um, I mean, a couple years after shooting Courageous, that they were thinking about me for the lead for the next one. And so our relationship turned into me being the lead for War Room. Wow. You know, w- one of the things that, um, you know, I've kind of found interesting about your journey and your career is that... Um, as an actor, you you haven't had to compromise on anything, or you know what I mean, because it's it's like you've you've been in roles that obviously have been faith based, and you know, kind of paint a, me- a a message that goes along with you know what it is that you believe. And so many um, Christian actors, you know, they don't, you know, either they have to make some some tough choices, or they say, well, man, I got to feed my family. Um, you know, if I have to put myself in a compromising situation, so be it, they'll justify it by, you know, whatever means, man. Is is that something that, you know, you've kind of set out to do, or is that just kind of, you know, how the chips are falling for you right now? That, that you, you nailed exactly what I came out here to do. You know, when I, when I shifted my, um, you know, passion to acting and did a couple films or whatever, when, when it came right down to, uh, uh, the, the agent that saw courageous, saw my performance actually to come out to, you know, uh, California, you know, come out to LA and the decision to do that. I mean, it was, just, it was, it was a no brainer to not do it. Actually. I was like, there's no way I'm going out there. And it, it's hard enough for Christians to make it and so on and so forth. And then that's when it hit me. And I write about this in my book, the pursuit. And that's when it hit me that maybe that's what the Lord wants. Everybody thinks like I think for the most part that you can't go out there and make it and keep your morals intact. You mm-hmm. know, uh, it, it, you just can't do it. it, it you got to dirty yourself up a little bit if you want to make it. That's the the, 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 uh, the thing that people think. So it's like, well, what usually breaks these, these uh, stigmas that people have is all it takes is one. I mean, people say you can't fly airplanes until so, so, so one person flew one. So I'm like, well, in order for me to help people... To, to that call themselves Christians and really are trying to hold on to the belief, come out to, to keep them from coming out to LA and dirtying themselves up and then thinking they can, you know, you know, they can put, the, put their Christianity on the shelf for a little while, get dirty, get some money, and then pick it back up. That's what people think they have to do. Well, if one person gets down there and doesn't compromise and makes it, then that kills that whole stigma, and people don't have to do that, and you become inspiring for other people. And so that became the goal. That was literally the mission. And I do if I compromise even a little bit then I'll just turn into everybody else who's done that, and I won't be inspiring for the people, and people will continue to come out and get dirty and try to make it. So for me to come out here, say no to all the things that I know God wouldn't agree with, um, and then one day look up and be in the number one movie in America, and I'm the lead in it, Right. At that, then I became that guy. <laughs> and so now I, you, there's proof that you can do it, and you can't hide behind the excuse anymore that you have to be dirty. And, and, and I'll say this, too. When you mention the people who do do that, um, I always 
tell people that you, people don't really realize who I'm being managed by. If you look on my uh, IMDb and look at who my who manages me and who represents me, and you look at uh, everybody else on the roster, a lot of people on the roster, you're gonna find some people that, and, and this is this is no knock against them at all. Just use them as an example that they may not believe in Jesus Christ, they may not have a faith at all, sure. and we have the same representation. Now, you all, you understand how they got it, because they're doing their thing, they're doing whatever. But how the heck did I get on there? Like, how are they representing me? And, and, and once again, my prayer was this, Lord, give me the representation that I need to make it, but they got to represent me in a way that honors you. And that is um, what's happening, because I had a contract written that says that, you know, just allow me to be me and protect my faith and represent me that way. And if they say yes to it, then I know it's of the Lord. If they if either that or they're gonna laugh me all the way out of there, you know. Mm. Um, but what ended up happening is I got the management and I got the representation, and I'm being represented the way that I would like to be represented. They have allowed me to do that, and it's only by the grace of God and by His purpose. So even with that, there's no compromise. Even though I'm, other people on the roster uh, may not be believers or anything else, when they come to represent me, they honor my faith, and that's what I prayed for, and I got it. Man, that's awesome, man. How do you how do you evaluate roles? Because I mean, obviously, you know, you audition and and things like that, and you know, you get scripts for people that don't know how this 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 stuff works. But I'm sure you even get people approach you about opportunities at this point, particularly after War Room. How do you how do you evaluate? You know which ones are which ones are best for you, or which ones not to take, which ones not to pursue, which ones to pursue. Man, they're so cool because I use the same method every single time, and it comes straight from Scripture. The first thing is, is I'm like, you know, what sent me out here in the first place? It's my God-given purpose. And Psalms 139, 16 says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out. Ain't nothing I'm doing surprising God. He wrote the life that he wants me to live the way I want to do it, and I want to live life based on what he wrote. You know, what, 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 you're the author of my life. You're the director of my movie. What am I supposed to be doing now? And then James 1, 5 scripture says, if you lack wisdom, ask God, because I don't know the future. So I'm like, all right, Lord, you wrote my life. Oh, you wrote a plan. Then what's my next move? Is this role that this guy or gal is offering me is that of you? Is that a part of the plan you, you, uh, you, 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 uh, wrote for me? If not, shift the door on this thing. If it is, swing it wide open so I can step through it. And one or the other always happens. And that's the way I roll. And if I'm ever confused about something, because I don't claim to be perfect, sometimes you can't necessarily hear them clear. So I keep studying scripture, I keep praying. But my default is always this. If Jesus Christ was looking through the lens of what I was doing, whether it was a Christian movie or whether it was just a secular movie or whatever it is, would he look through the lens of the film as the director and say, I love it, TC. Mm -hmm. I love it. Would he be on set with me saying, I love what you're doing. I love that profane language you're using. I love the way you're doing that sex scene. It's awesome. And see, I know he wouldn't say that. So when I look at what I'm doing, would Jesus approve in the flesh? Like, would he approve? And, it's, and that's, an easy, that's easy to discern. People are fooling themselves, and they don't think they can discern that. So my prayers, Scripture, and that conviction right there, you know, all dictate what roles I take. And like I said, everything doesn't have to say Jesus, Lord, and God, and all that. It doesn't always have to say that. But it can't dishonor my Jesus, my Lord, my God. So even if it's secular, man, I mean, there's some good stuff. I've been one of the superhero movies or, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that, that may not be spiritual, but it's, at least it's clean. And so sure. I look for all those kinds of roles. That's good, man. That's really good. And now you got you got your, your new devotional coming out, man. 21 Day Devotional, bro. Yeah, man, I'm really excited about it. Um, it focuses, uh, you know, I wrote it for athletes, you know, um, and it's written with the sensitivity that uh, other people, you know, may read it. So all you got to do is, is have fun with athletic concepts, understand athletic concepts, be a sports fan, and then you'll be able to dig the book too. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's playing on God's team, 21-week devotional. And I wrote this because, you know, I was in college and I was an athlete, and that's when I learned that Jesus could not just be my Savior. Mm. He must also be my Lord. And there's the difference between the two. And I didn't realize that right away. So I was this believer running around, um, just doing Christian habit-type things. But my life didn't match up with what the Bible says a true follower was. And so by learning that in, in college, I was in my sophomore year, you know, um, I, I became a true Christian athlete at that time. 
And so I wrote it because I know there are athletes that are going through the same thing I went through in locker rooms, you know, uh, on teams around the world where it's tough to be a Christian. And I wanted this to encourage them, but I also wanted to set the record, set the record straight that being a Christian athlete is more than just, you know, pounding your chest and pointing up to the sky when you score a touchdown, only talking to God on Sunday like he's a good luck charm. You know, you, you got to live that throughout your whole week. You got to know who he is Saturday through the rest of the days as well. You know, and so it kind of points to that. And then it also points to, for those people who may not be on the team and wondering, hey, can I use this? Well, I define team in a book as a collection of people working together for a common goal. So if you, you know, on your job, I'm sure there's a staff where you are with the radio station. Y'all form a team, and there's a boss to that team. And your job's around the country. There's a, you, you, your staff, that, there's a boss. And for me, it was my team, and our coach was the boss. Well, when you give all the effort you can to them, you do it for various reasons, to, to, to on teams to win championships, or a job to make money and rise up in the company. Well, you do everything that dude tells you or that female tells you, whoever the boss is. You know the company manual backwards and forwards. You do all you can do to be good on it, just like I knew my playbook, and I, and I play hard as a football player. Well, when I looked at my life as a Christian, and I call that team Jesus in the book, I was failing tremendously because I wasn't giving that kind of effort to that team. I didn't know my playbook that well, which was the Bible. You know, I wasn't, you know, uh, talking to my coach like I, you know, like I did my football coach. And, and that's prayer when you're a Christian. You know, and, and I just, so I kind of use those analogies throughout to basically say, hey, if you are doing well at your job or doing well in your team or struggling as a Christian, then it's for the same reason. Your effort stinks and you need to fix that and give him all you got just like you do these other teams in, in your life. And don't give him your leftovers. And so the 21-week devotion that kind of takes you on a path to help strengthen you in that area. You know, we talk about knowing the playbook, you know, and uh, we talk about strength training and endurance training and the team meeting, you know, and all those kinds of things. So that's kind of the gist of the book. And there's 18 wrap-up videos on my website that's free. You just watch them at the end of the study. And I'm hoping that's going to be a game changer for a lot of people. Man, this is a perfect time of the year for that kind of stuff, too, because you know how so many people are back in the gym with the new year, with the resolutions and all of that stuff, man, you know, so. Absolutely, man. They're strengthening their physical muscles. But then the scripture says that physical training is of some use, but spiritual training is, is use in this life and life to come. And it's better. It's much better. So, you know, you don't, you don't want those strong biceps and you got weak muscles when it comes to lust and you got weak muscles when it comes to praying and you got weak muscles when it comes to endurance. You know, you gotta, you gotta strengthen that as well. And that's kind of what the book talks about in, a, in, a, in the strength training chapter. So absolutely, man, everybody's going to give it all they got for the things that they want most. But we got to give all we got for the team that matters most. And, uh, you know, if you're a follower of Christ, that's Team Jesus, man. So I'm hoping that this really helps people. Amen, man. TC, um, just real quick, because, uh, again, sure. you have so much stuff going on from, you know, the books, the movies, the public speaking, man, just give everybody the website, the social media stuff so people can connect with you, man, and, and, and dive deeper with a lot of this. Absolutely. So it's my website is www.tcstallings.com. And uh, on social media, it's TC Stallings across the board. Uh, except for Instagram, it's official TC Stallings. And, uh, you know, yeah, it, I would love to just, you know, I actually look at my stuff and, and, and interact with people. So, you know, if you go on there, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're reading any of the books, let me know how you're doing. And, um, yeah, and just to keep up with things that's going on with me, you know, my website and IMDb for all the movies and, uh, you know, TV shows or whatever the Lord leads me to do. And, uh, you know, Plan on God's Team and The Pursuit, my two books. Uh, for, uh, Plan on God's Team is a new one. It's available on Amazon and uh, Barnes and & Noble and, you know, your favorite bookstores and things like that. And, and again, just uh, keep me posted, man. It's encouraging to know that uh, these things are working in your life. And uh, not as a good luck charm or nothing like that, but as the real deal truth that's making changes in your life and your family's life. And uh, I'm motivated to hear the progress. It's not always that you get to hear the fruit from this stuff. So when you share that with me, it motivates me to keep doing what I'm doing. Man, TC, is so, I'm so inspired and encouraged by you, brother. Real talk, man. Thank you so much for coming on, man. And, um... Definitely going to keep you in prayer, man, because I, I, I feel like this is just the beginning of what the Lord is, is really going to be doing in your life, bro. Absolutely, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. And all you out there listening, uh, thank you for uh, you know, your support of what I do and for the support of this show. Bless you. On the way to radio show. On the way to radio. On the way to radio.
Radio Show, where it's much more music, it's ministry.